Yeah. So, Kurt, thanks for joining. Uh, you know, I know we've kind of had a few run-ins and stuff like that. Uh, for everyone that doesn't know, um, I'm from Minneapolis, and Kurt is from Minneapolis too. So it's kind of how we initially got networked through our friend Rachel. So yeah, I'll just kind of get right into it. If you can tell, we're both on our bridges right now, so we're quarantined. Uh, yeah, far, but your far bridge away. Is better because Star Trek is better than Star Wars. I can't argue with that. I agree. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, I just kind of the first thing is this is an, a, a cliche question, but I think it's, you know, very interesting to see what everyone's doing. So what have you been kind of just like spending your time on here in quarantine? Working. Working. Yeah. What have you been working on? Well, I work for a video game company. Okay. And, and so does the wife. So business is booming. Um, I have more to do than I did before. <laughs> nice. And so you're just... Right. Because the kids are at home, and yet um, here in San Francisco, they're back on an official school curriculum again, like mandatory graded daily school curriculum, and the teachers are oh, on right. video with the kids all day, every day. I don't know how many places are doing that, but I know it's not everywhere. And so we have, each have to do our jobs, and then also two kids, who one of whom has to be pretty closely supervised on his daily school schedule, because he's pretty little. Uh, in a, all in a 1300 square foot apartment so, so oh wow yeah that's it's a that's bit of a lot. trial but uh we're, we're kind of liking all the extra family time okay good yeah it seems like some people are regretting it and the people with uh mostly functioning families seem to be you know finding some some worthwhile uh elements of it so that's good yeah so I you're just busy uh, work for you is 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 not the volume hasn't gone down whatsoever no and you work from home obviously yeah mostly um i th there's some stuff about my job that i can't do when i'm not there like uh i was in the middle of setting up an audio recording room there uh, wow. at the um at the game studio and i can't do anything about that now will you uh are you allowed to tell us which game studio this is or is it kind yeah, of um, yeah, I work for Machine Zone. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah, so, well, that's good. Uh, I'm glad that you're still alive. You look in relatively good spirits. So, um, I take it we're not going to get any, like, acoustic uh, in-sock covers coming from your apartment anytime soon. Like, you've been seeing all of these just horrible things that these musicians have been doing, where they're just covering their own songs in an acoustic guitar or, or something like that. They're horrible? Uh, I mean, well, the Tears for Fears one I thought was great, but um, okay. they're they're pretty saturated in cheese. <laughs> um, no, and uh, it, in fact, we are doing something like that. Okay, so, great. So next next weekend. Oh fuck yeah! Well then, I'm pumped. I mean, you know, if it's if it's any one I like, then it's okay. But uh, yeah. there's just a few I won't mention. I'm sure that if you saw them as well, you would cringe. So. Well, I've been, I appreciate the idea of it, but I haven't actually yeah. um, witnessed any yet. Uh, oh, okay. OMB has um, put up a, a concert that they did in Germany <clears throat> on YouTube, I guess, for the next week it's available. Oh, wow. So Good that's idea. cool. Yeah, there's just all kinds of stuff emerging. You know, we got our virtual parties, and then they're doing all these, you know, goth festival, these virtual versions and stuff. It's um, it's interesting well, to seeing how the music industry is reacting to this, you know. The, the big thing around here is the birthday parties. Mm. Both, both of our kids, their birthdays are falling in the quarantine. Oh, wow, okay. So yeah, what are you gonna do about that? Well, one of them we did already and the other one's coming up. It's just, it's just kind of sad, you know, all you can do is yeah. a video meeting with some other kids and- Just the Zoom birthday party or, you know, something along those yeah. lines. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a bad thing, but it was difficult to make it any different from what they did, what they do all day anyway, right. which is to get online and share screen, play video games like Roblox. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I, I have no kids, so this is all just way out there. That's your problem, Grant. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's my next step. I got to get my cat uh, a real brother, a human brother. Well, so well, Let me explain life to you. Everything okay. conspires to give you psychological problems. Yeah. And, and your purpose is to pass those on. Oh, well, I got plenty of that, so 
guess so a man that the next several generation can create a bunch of whiny emo music too. Yeah. <laughs> I like to think it's a little more angsty and less emo, but you know. well, just for disclaimer for anyone listening, I haven't actually heard any of Grant's music yet. I just meant in general. Oh yeah, it's not good. It's not good. Someday it'll come out though. But yeah, yeah so uh, one of the the kind of the uh, things I wanted to kind of start off with, and you know, I I rarely get perspective about this, but just from being from Minneapolis, and you know um you're from minneapolis and we don't really get perspective of like the scene here other than just like the uh, the obvious prince perspective which is all consuming you know in the media and all that stuff and what it was like and how it surrounds prince which is great you definitely kind of want that it was a huge uh you know thing that changed the culture but um i'm just curious like what was your experience in minneapolis growing up you know with the formation of your band and you know challenges or just what was it like um, yeah, obviously it was radically different. Um, I haven't really had much insight into any scenes in Minneapolis since, well, I haven't lived there since 88 and, uh, I kept in touch somewhat till like the mid nineties. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm way out of touch on what's going on in Minneapolis. Most of what I know honestly comes through, uh, you and a few other friends. Um, so this is just going to be a big diatribe on back in my day. Yeah, but I figure exactly what I want. I'm justified in saying that. So back in my day, uh, well, you mentioned Prince. Uh, I people have frequently asked me, like, "Oh, you were coming up in Minneapolis back then? Oh man, so Prince, right?" And no, right? I mean. I mean we didn't know him. Nobody we knew knew him. Um, I, I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm I believe probably uh, things were far more self segregating back then than they are now. Although I imagine they still are to some extent. Uh, I know that Prince definitely crossed all the genre lines, except the one we were in. Like, I mean, he, he never was a thing in sort of the alternative scene because Prince was a pop musician. Um, right. I think everything he did was pretty great, but um, he wasn't doing, you know, what people were listening to at the First Avenue in the, I mean, uh, in 7th Street Entry in 1982. Right, right. he's a main like all, type. Right, that was all punk and uh, early new wave and um, no one would have had any, any time for uh, for that kind of music uh, in the scene in which I circulated anyway. So we never got to know any of those people. Um, the people we did get to know were like things that fall down, the wallet, uh, mm. a little a little bit of exposure to the suburbs, um, uh, the hipsters who then became the mofos. Mofos. Um, we never really interacted much with um the replacements guys never really i don't I think mm. we met them um but interestingly soul asylum opened for us in our second show ever i think it was their first show ever oh wow Holy there are about four there are about 14 people there and uh at the <laughs> time they were calling themselves loud fast rules okay oh well, i don't know about that name but um that's but interesting I, we may we may get some Soul Asylum fans who will jump on to correct part of this because my understanding that Loud Fast Rules then became Soul Asylum, honestly, is I'm only about 80% sure of that. I seem to remember believing that at one time, but I could have been wrong. And I have no idea what the lineup was. I mean, it may have only been one person who was common to both acts. Right. But as far as I know, Soul Asylum in their previous uh, incarnation opened for us in our second show ever. Um, and we were, we were particularly out of touch and unpopular with uh, the alternative, even the alternative scene back then. Like even the people we could only count on to even come to our shows, we were very, very out of touch with them too, because A, we didn't play guitars. And you know, right yeah. there, that's a, that's a deal breaker pretty much socially right. and artistically. And at that time we didn't drink. I mean, okay. if, you if you don't have a guitar or a drink, you are Who socially are you? non-existent. Yeah, and then, you're not very rock and roll, I guess. <laughs> and then just to make it a triple whammy, we were kind of assholes and, and you know, borderline autistic. 
So, uh, yeah, we were quite disconnected from the from the scene. We were pretty much just our own thing. So you're almost were, kind of like outcast in, in you know in the community, even as you were kind of blowing up within this uh, outside of the community, I guess, right? You know. Oh yeah, that came later. Um, you have to be in first to be able to be cast out, right? Oh yeah, I mean, true. We started out as oddities and then we became pariahs. So there, <laughs> there isn't much to work with there. Okay, well, one, one last question about Minneapolis and just relating back to Prince here. I remember when you invited me over to Paul Robbs, uh, I briefly heard this story about the Tim Burton's 1988 Batman. And I, I'm super curious about it. Um, so, and I, you know, I think this is one of those things where not many people know this, but it's kind of like a huge <laughs> thing. So you were given the theme, uh, Information Society was given the, the theme to do for that movie, correct, at first? What happened uh, there? I don't know if it ever got to be that cut and dried, but yes, we were up for doing the, um, the, the main theme song for Batman. It was going to be our cover of David Bowie's Heroes. Wow. I'm, I'm just looking at Batman here. I thought that was 89. Oh, yeah, it could have been 89. Yeah, it was 89 because okay. 88 just didn't match with my memory of when we were doing this stuff. You would so, know. So, <laughs> yeah, um, we were at one time, it was considered likely that that would be what, what they would do. And that's an example of the kind of thing that would have been an incredibly lucky fluke that would have propelled us up to, you know, the next level of success. But it didn't pan out because at the last minute there was somebody else at Warner Brothers who just said, well, no, I, I can advance my career better if I use my connections to get Prince to do the music for Batman. And Prince is more famous anyway. Um, you know, and that's all logical. Sure. So, there you go. Yep. Yeah, it's always, there's always, everyone's always trying to kind of advance in their own ways. And that's kind of how the, my experience with the music industry as well is it's just some people are just out there to advance themselves and that's, that's it, you know. Um, yeah, it's, not it's necessarily a, a bad approach, but um, it's not right. Much fun for others. And can I, we I find this out. cover? Can we find this uh, David Bowie okay. Heroes well, cover out never, there? See, this was back. This was back in the time when your home demos sounded really bad compared yeah. to your visions before I, Ableton. Not anymore because of because of digital technology. Now your your home demos are essentially as good as as anything. Um, so all we have is the home demo demo, and it sounds terrible, but okay. it does exist. Okay, interesting. Uh, I have to say, though, that um, that music from Batman is possibly my least favorite stuff that Prince ever did, which was really disappointing. Yeah. Thinking, oh, man, our song could be so great for that movie. And then the thing that actually happened was just, uh, for this? The video, I, I like. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. But yeah, I, I like the outfit in the video. But, um, cool. Yeah, that, it's interesting. Well... You're going to have a lot of fans now um, looking on the internet for that track. You're probably not going to be able to find it. So let's just leave it there and let them search How about that. I've, I've given it away to people in the past. One thing I wanted to kind of pivot to, and I think this is pinnacle for anyone my age, really anyone that had any uh, you know, experience with Sega Genesis games you know, knows this stuff. Um, I know that you know, everyone on the Reddit forums and stuff like links you to Soul Reaver 1 as being your masterpiece and all that stuff. Personally, me and almost everyone I've talked to, we're all friends, huge fans of X-Men 2 Clone Wars. Now, are you and, talking about the game or the, or the CD? Uh, I'm talking about the game. Okay, did you ever hear the CD that Sega produced of, like... No, I actually have not heard the CD of it. Yeah, they, uh, a couple of years later, they had me record, you know, proper studio recordings of all the music from the game. That was back when Sega had this idea that they were gonna also be a record company <coughs> uh, okay. publishing albums of their game's music. So just kind of a full, not limited to the, not limited to what, uh, 16 bits compositions essentially. Right, oh, Interesting. They, not the number of bits. <laughs> all the sound that came out of a Sega Genesis was coming from a six voice, four operator FM chip. And that's all the music and sound effects combined. Yeah. Now, for listeners who um, I don't expect to be up on all those terms, six voice means that the device can only play six different sounds at the same time. So imagine music, you've got, let's say a percussion sound and a bass sound and a melody sound and one other sound. 
So that's right. four. And then you have sound effects. Well, as the sound effects happen at the same time, they steal voices away from the music. Um, and besides, only having four voices to do music is not easy. It's yeah, I can imagine. Pretty minimalistic. Yeah. And then it, you know, and then the sound effects would even take away from those six that I had right. available. And then uh, four operator, four operator FM uh, is a description of a type of way of making what we call synthesizer sounds. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not going to get into too much detail, but suffice to say that one four operator FM chip is not a hugely powerful sound palette with which right. to work. It's, uh, it can do some cool stuff, but it's like any single instrument. Yeah. It's limited. Yeah. Especially from that era, right? Yeah. Interesting. Although I have to say it was, um, I learned from that project that it is very beneficial well, for any, any artist, or probably not even necessarily only art, for any endeavor, it's very beneficial to spend some time, not get stuck there, but some time in an environment in which you are extremely constrained, right? Like if you're a painter, do a whole series using only three colors. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a computer programmer, uh, do something in assembly and you only give yourself uh, 512 bytes to use. Right. Right? Or uh, if you're a, a writer, try to write something using a palette of only 150 words. You, you get the point. Yeah. Um, right. You wouldn't want to stay there forever, but I, I was amazed at how it just developed my creative thinking to have to, I have to work within those constraints and to see what you could come up with under That's those, under those uh, restrictions. Yeah. It's just interesting to hear that because it's just so vastly different than you know what we have now with Ableton and just all the you know any extension freeware plugins etc analog sense digital sense you know there's literally there's just there's almost nothing Brand. like that anymore unless you choose to do it unless you choose to be one of these heads that seeks these uh, masochistic tools out that limit you and you know get into that world but yeah, it, was, it was it was kind of like a wild west situation back then you know Good chat. What's up? Grant. <laughs> oh. <laughs> did, did you say analog? I may have said analog. You said it may analog. have been my Minnesota accent. <laughs> no, analog. You said analog. A N A L dash L O G. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Now that it's spelled out that way, that's pretty gross, actually. So, yeah, oh, just, there I am. Yeah, that's I what I'll be known for. I couldn't let that pounce. <laughs> Great. Um, Anyway, yes, and obviously uh, the explosion of creative possibilities that have happened with digital recording or you know, in any medium it, it isn't a bad thing, uh, but it presents a different set of problems. And right. the problem you face at the other end of the spectrum is just there's so many different things you could do. And every one of them is kind of a complex choice, cre creativity choice. Uh, and you, it's very easy to get lost mm -hmm. and not, not just lost, which implies, you know, going the wrong place or doing the wrong thing, but to just sort of be overwhelmed by that blank slate experience. Uh, I, I know from experience that most little kids, if you give them 128 crayons, some of them are just going to cry. Yeah. And some of them will just reach for the red and start coloring, but some yeah. of them will go, ah, and <laughs> I've, that's, I've been with kids who, who are like me. You have to be careful. You have one to hell of them, an analogy. Yeah, that's accurate. Eight, you have to give them eight crayons, not, right. not 128. Yeah. Okay, so if you, just looking at, you know, you've tapped into so many different weird areas of the music industry, just on very different uh, playing fields, I guess. But if you could just think about, you know, back in your career, you know, you do so many kind of like just side projects now and DJing and all this stuff. Um, if you could just look back on your career, is there any one kind of moment or time or project that you're working on where you felt, you kind of felt the most fulfilled or happy or kind of what was, you know, is there a moment like that where you just had like the Zen where you felt like things were just, you felt the most content? Well, do you mean while I was working on it or in hindsight? Uh, I mean, now in hindsight, you know what I mean? But if you look yeah, back, you're like, yeah, I was happy. you're working you know? on things, it's, it's usually some kind of grind or stressful situation. Yeah. But uh, I, I'd say there were, two um there was the there was the period of six weeks in 1997 
early 97 when I was working on the Don't Be Afraid album with Steven Seibold, who is the guy who also did Hate Department and right. still does. Uh, he lives in Indiana now. Um, that was just a great time because it was the first time I had ever extensively worked with anyone other than uh, my bandmates. Mm -hmm. um, and we did not have a good working relationship in the band at all. Right. So it was the first time I had done more than just a few hours in a working situation where it was like positively collaborative and, and, and successful. Um, and then the other thing I, I would cite is Soul Reaver 2. Oh, Soul Reaver 2, okay. Yeah. Just really into make, making the music for that or what? Well, I th again, in hindsight, I think it marked not the high point, but sort of the crossing the threshold in, my, uh, in the games industry where I finally felt like, all right, I've done something. I've yeah. really done something now. You just felt like, you're, yeah, you were just making magic at the time, kind of. Well, whether it was magic or not, the point is I, I felt like even if I never did anything else in the games industry, I could look back and say that I did something worthwhile and important in it. Yeah, right. That's interesting. Yeah, you just felt like you had accomplished something, you know? Yeah, and I was, I was proud of it. I mean, I really liked what was done for, um, for the music and the sound on Soul Reaver 2. I, 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 I've gotten as much or more artistic fulfillment out of some of the video game music that I've done as anything that I've ever done in the band or elsewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have uh, one question left, and it's just a, it's a fan question. It's from my, uh, someone named Chris Campion uh, from Brooklyn. Uh, he's in a band called Multiple Man, and he, wa he wants to know, do you have any tips for a smart young man like me who wants to get into rollerblading? Tell me as to prove he's smart first. Okay. What no. if he was dumb? Do you have any tips? tips. <laughs> Here's some tips. Uh, fuck blades. Get quads, first of all. Blades are for jocks and dorks. Um, se <laughs> second, right. um, you can't segregate the skating out into a separate activity. Like, hmm, when should I go skating? I know, I'll skate between 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock on Saturday. Uh, skating has to become part of who and what you are. Like, for me, I forced myself, and it wasn't easy, to uh, use skates instead of shoes for several years. If I ever had shoes on, it was skates. Right. That's, that's the main thing. That's the main thing with anything. If you really want to get into something, you have to commit to it in a way that's going to hurt. Yeah. I just wanted to end this. Um, you know, if, I'm curious if you have any kind of message you want to say. You know, obviously, we're in a really fucking weird situation right now. And, um, oh, about the yeah. Quarantine? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, the fact that we're out here in space quarantining ourselves from Earth. Um, just kind of curious if you had a message for your viewers or a message for the listeners or just kind of any message you know, relevant to the times, the fact that we're all stuck in our homes, um, that sort of thing. Uh, probably, I mean, I've been giving messages since we got on the phone here, but um, probably not. Because the first thing that comes to my mind, and I don't know if anyone finds this helpful or destructive, but it's, uh, there's really no way around the fact that this sucks ass. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I don't deny the value of making efforts to be positive or to find the good side of something or, or to you know create value where however you can um more power to everyone who does that um but i i wouldn't try to cast this in any sort of positive way there there's some upsides like i said we're getting more family time but right. you know, i know people who live alone but it sucks who are, who are not introverts right so right. I like that. I, I guess the main thing I'd say is if you feel like this sucks ass, you're not wrong. That's a valid feeling. You absolutely. go with that feeling. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Honestly, I, I think that's, that's the best answer I could have gotten. Um, mm. Just be fucking real with people, you know what I mean? And just deal with things how they are. You don't develop emotional coping skills by ignoring the things that are going on in your life. You do it by accepting the things, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think Great. the crap you want to avoid that I've seen people get into is uh, you start with the idea that it's good to be positive minded. And uh, I yeah. can't disagree with that. That's, I mean, that's not wrong. Um, but then as is all too human, 
you quickly flip over into blaming yourself if you're not. Yeah. <laughs> and then it just becomes this cycle of self damnation. You know, it's like, oh, I should be positive right. minded, but I'm not. I suck. This is all my fault. It's like, no, it's like an expectation. Some thing. things are ass, and you should be unhappy about yeah. them. Yeah. That's healthy. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Well, we can leave it at that. I think that's a great uh, bitter note to leave it on. So um, I just wanted to thank you again. I, I think everyone's going to really like this. And yeah, uh, it's just been great. It's been awesome just getting to know you and just kind of, you know, um, just kind of feeling accepted in that wheelhouse. So, you know, I, I really appreciate it. So, you know, this is, this is just, this is special for me for, for you to take the time out of your day. So thank you so much. You're very welcome, sir. Okay. All right. Enjoy your quarantine. Yes, enjoy the kids and their uh, sad birthday parties. <laughs> well. All right, have a good one.